This is the Brain Chip Podcast. Hear from our thought leaders about neuromorphic computing, beneficial AI, and how Brain Chip's Akita is pushing AI to the edge. This podcast is a place for investors, practitioners, and anyone interested in the future of AI. Hi, all. I'm Rob Telson, Vice President of Ecosystem and Partnerships at BrainChip. Welcome and thank you for joining our latest episode of our BrainChip podcast series. These events are structured to provide current and future investors and those interested in AI and the BrainChip technology a path to better understand who we are, what we are doing, and where we are going. If you have not listened to any of our podcasts, please go to our website at www.brainchip.com. Go to our media tab where you will find our podcasts. You can also listen to any of these podcasts on your favorite podcast platform, or please go to our YouTube channel at Brainchip Inc. and find all of our podcasts and all of our additional media. Today, we have the pleasure of spending some time with Luca Vere. Luca is the co-founder and CEO at Prophecy. He's a technology evangelist who has been on the forefront of product development and market leadership. His focus is on leading Prophecy's mission in providing the world's most advanced event-based vision systems, which are built on the foundation of neuromorphic engineering. Luca is driven on computer vision with the emphasis really on speed, performance, efficiency, and safety for a new era in autonomy, automation, and mobility. We are talking about advanced vision systems today, leveraging neuromorphic design principles, another key factor in the computing revolution and eventually impacting our everyday lives. Luca, welcome to the BrainChip podcast. Thank you, Rob. Hello, everyone. It's a great pleasure to, to be with you today and talk a little bit more about what we do at Prophecy and also what we do together with BrainChip to, as you said, unlock this uh, neuromorphic paradigm fully. Yeah, you know, I, I, Luca, it, it's great to have you with us today. This is going to be a great discussion. For our listeners, I've had the opportunity to work closely with Prophecy, a company that is pioneering the importance of advanced vision systems and the impact of neuromorphic architecture. As AI evolves into our lives, it's critical that companies such as BrainChip and Prophecy work closely together, expanding our ecosystems with true collaboration and proof points of our technology. This is what BrainChip and Prophecy are currently doing, driving our technologies to a point where current and future customers will leverage the Prophecy vision systems with the ultra low power and efficient performance of BrainChip's Akita, providing best in class vision solutions. That's the goal. What excites me about today's conversation is having the opportunity to talk to Luca about his journey and for all of us to truly understand the time and the energy that is put into becoming an industry leader and driving the growth of the, of the world's most advanced vision system. So Luca, why don't you take a moment and provide our listeners with a bit of background on yourself? Sure. So, um, so I'm an electrical engineer. I, I grew up in Italy and um, after my studies, I moved a little bit around the globe. I spent uh, many years in Japan, in Germany, in the UK um, as an engineer first, and then uh, uh, moving uh, into more product marketing, business development role uh, in large corporations. And um, what happened was that eight years ago in 2014, um, by chance, but also because I was looking for a change uh, somehow in my career, I met my co-founder, Christophe Posch, who is uh, one of uh, the uh, scientific pioneers in the field of neuromorphic vision. Christophe uh, has been working for more than 25 years in developing uh, silicon retinas or event-based cameras. And we met actually at the right time. And very often, actually, you know, uh, startup stories are stories of, uh, of, uh, uh, of right timing. Uh, where uh, people met, uh, meet, and and uh, with actually common goal of starting something new, and this is what what was for me and, and Christophe. So I was at the time looking for some change in my career, and he was actually looking for a, a, a partner to uh, start uh, a company around the technology he was uh, researching at that time, and this is uh, uh, and this is the beginning of prophecy. So we started in two thousand fourteen. Uh, with uh, uh, actually first development of uh, a silicon retina 
for vision restoration of blind people. In fact, um, at the very beginning, uh, uh, our, our research was mostly uh, uh, carried out uh, at the Vision Institute, which is a research institute in Paris, which was also working on uh, retinal implants for vision restoration of blind. And this was actually a perfect combination to enable retinal implant uh, together with our technology, with an event-based sensor to e e enable uh, a cortical, so brain stimulation uh, in people who have certain degeneration of the retina and become uh, unfortunately completely blind. And this was actually the, the trigger and the main motivation at the, at the very beginning to start to start prophecy. So in fact, to industrialize our first uh, silicon retina uh, to bring it for this uh, uh, medical application. Uh, and this of course was just a starting point because over time, um, the benefit of the technology uh, are so uh, uh, broad and deep, in fact, uh, uh, in terms of impact they can bring also in other field of application. And over time, we open up um, uh, also uh, other market opportunity, including the industrial, mobile, automotive, uh, and, and so many more. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And I, I think for our listeners, this is, this is what... Um, the 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 adoption and the introduction and in, in, in of technology is all about it they it, it really were focused on uh vision and really focused on as as luca mentioned retinal implant and and how they could help people improve their vision or or, or save their vision right and right. so uh keep telling us a little bit more about prophecy i mean you mentioned uh, industrial you mentioned uh, some of these other areas where you've taken the technology Take a moment so our, our listeners can really understand, okay, you now told us how you started. Now, where are we and where are we going? Yes. So let me, first of all, uh, explain a little bit how the technology works. Um, because this has been also something that at the very beginning, when uh, for the first time I met Christophe, my co-founder, uh, I found this, uh, this description so, so powerful, so compelling, and so uh, fundamentally right. Uh, to serve actually many uh, machine vision and AI application. And this actually remain uh, so, so, so valid today after also uh, eight years. So in fact, uh, uh, Prophecy is developing a, a silicon eye, an, an artificial model of the human eye. Uh, and the way it works is basically uh, uh, in our sensor, we have pixels that are independent and asynchronous and uh, react only to changes in the scene. And this is very different from conventional image sensor technologies. Uh, everyone is probably familiar with, right? So when you today take a video with your smartphone, uh, you would basically acquire images at a fixed point in time. And this principle is quite old. It was pioneered uh, actually in the, in the 150 years ago. Uh, and it, it is actually, uh, the, it made the foundation of cinematography and photography, right? So when we do a video, we produce a sequence of images. Um, and you understand that this approach is, uh, is, is fine for, for video making, for human consumption, but it's not really efficient for machine consumption because typically you, you would acquire a sequence of images uh, with a lot of redundant data, uh, with information loss between frames, with also issues of dynamic range because typically the exposure time is fixed. So. When it comes to use a uh, conventional image sensor for AI or for machine vision, you need to deal with uh, these three bottlenecks of uh, data redundancy, information loss, and uh, uh, um, challenging lighting conditions. Now, it, it actually turns out that the, the human eye is not working this way because our eyes are not sending uh, images at fixed point in time to the brain, like a conventional camera, but the eye, is reacting to changes in the scene. It's only acquiring what is uh, moving, in fact, only the dynamic information. So for instance, if I'm watching uh, a, a baseball game, uh, my eyes would uh, simply send to the brain what is, uh, uh, what is moving, for example, the ball or the players that are running around. But for example, what is static, the, the, the field or the background with the sky. Uh, so this part of the, the the scene will not be acquired over and over by the retina because it's already known by the brain, right? So essentially the eye does this fantastic job of sending only 
the differential information, only the update, if you will, only what is actually relevant for us to take a decision. We don't need to know that um, the information of the field over and over because we know it already. We only need to know that the ball is, uh, is going to a certain direction at a certain speed and react to it very, very fast. So if you think about it, then you understand that the, the, the eye is a very interesting model for machine vision because basically we are solving these three main bottlenecks I was referring before of data redundancy, information loss and dynamic range, because essentially we only focus on the changes. So the acquisition becomes very efficient. We acquire these changes very fast at microsecond time precision, so almost continuous in time and with adaptive exposure time. So independently from lighting conditions. And that's the reason why uh, our technology becomes uh, very uh, uh, suitable for a machine vision and AI applications because we are fundamentally solving these three main bottlenecks. And this apply to, uh, to several fields of, of our application. So industrial is one, uh, but also uh, uh, IoT or uh, mobile phone and, uh, and automotive. And I can actually maybe make some examples of some of this, uh, of this application, uh, uh, if you will, uh, Rob. What do you think? Yeah, I, I think that would be good. I think, I, I think just for our listeners, I want to I want to highlight something, then we'll keep going. Um, the the key to the technology is to it, is very similar in the in the, the neuromorphic principles of really focusing on the change that takes place and and using the baseball analogy, um, the sport analogy. It doesn't have to be baseball, but uh, you know, uh, but there are other sports. It's really focusing on what's moving while everything else is is just stagnant and. Um, you know, for our, our listeners, again, uh, Luca brought up three key points between the data redundancy, the information loss and the dynamic range of what's transpiring out there. Um, this is what makes uh, the prophecy technology so valuable. So let's talk about some of those examples. And I think the important thing for, for all of us, what we love to know is the little nugget of information in regards to the impact um, from a business standpoint. Let's talk about how that's going to impact businesses and technologies moving forward. And that just leads to, to more the adoption of prophecies technology and, and brain chips technology as well. Yes, fantastic. So let, let me give you uh, three examples in three key markets. One is industrial, the other is automotive, and the third one is, is mobile, smartphone. So in industrial is about uh, high-speed machine vision in real time. What uh, here people are uh, trying to achieve is to, for instance, increase the throughput of their machine. For example, think about uh, all the, uh, the, the, the uh, tremendous growth that we have been seeing in e-commerce uh, enabled by uh, uh, actually a, a seamless um, uh, integration in, in, in supply chain uh, systems um, that are, are becoming more and more automatized, right? So one of the uh, key challenges in this, uh, uh, in this warehouses, for example, is to be able to uh, monitor, uh, for example, boxes uh, that are moving around. And the, one of the key tasks of this, uh, uh, of the machine vision is to, for example, read the uh, barcode um, at high speed, because this is typically one of the bottleneck in the process. Uh, they, they need basically to, to trade off between uh, uh, the accuracy in the barcode reading and the speed of the conveyor, right? So using a machine vision system is fundamental. Uh, now, uh, when you use a conventional camera, the bottleneck is that uh, uh, in order to read uh, at high speed, you need to increase your frame rate. But then what, in, what is, it happens when you increase your frame rate is that you increase the amount of data and be able to process this data in real time to, for example, uh, do some sorting in the process, selecting one box in one direction rather than, than another, uh, this becomes very, very challenging for conventional camera uh, because you need to basically make a trade-off between real-time uh, computational capability and speed of the acquisition. And this is what uh, uh, prophecy event-based camera is solving because since we are only focusing on the changes of the box moving on the conveyor rather than acquire all the background which is not moving, this actually uh, implied that we acquire much less data, typically between 10 to 100 times less data compared to a conventional camera. And this actually enable us to uh, process this data in real time. So you can see that we can, on one side, uh, increase the throughput, the throughput of the process while actually reducing computational, computational need. And this is one, one typical application in industrial. 
in the second second sector is, is automotive uh, in this area uh, of course what we we have been observing in the past 10 years is uh, an increasing uh, uh, adoption of uh, uh, sensor technologies in the car to make the car safer and more autonomous and of course camera technologies are an important component of it especially when it comes to for example understanding the environment detecting obstacles uh, detecting uh, for example activating an emergency braking in front of an obstacle or a pedestrian or a bicycle and here the the benefit of using a, a prophecy event based camera is that uh, uh, not only our camera similarly to what we do in, in industrial can react very fast to changes so can reduce latency in detection but also because we have uh, an adaptive uh, exposure per pixel we are basically almost independent from lighting conditions so think about a scene where for example you are driving at night there is a car in front of you with the high beam on and there is a, a pedestrian crossing the road this is a very challenging scenario because because there is glare because you are in a low light situation uh, so with a normal camera it's very very challenging to uh, react fast and uh, and this is a typical challenge that an event based camera can help uh, solving and we have been actually doing benchmark showing that we can uh, push the state of the art of this uh, 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 techniques uh, 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 greatly. So this is another example where our technology can uh, uh, bring an impact to, to the market. And the third one, uh, which is something we have been actively working on in the past two years, is um, uh, computational imaging for smartphones. Uh, this is something actually quite uh, new uh, uh, because uh, uh, we wouldn't think of using a, an event-based sensor for photography. But in fact, uh, it, it actually is, is, is very interesting to combine a, a, a regular frame-based sensor with an event-based sensor because where the, event, where the frame-based sensor is today uh, failing is typically to acquire motion. And if a frame-based sensor is greater than the, at acquiring static information, right? Because typically you expose during a, a fixed uh, uh, time uh, a certain amount of light, then you capture uh, this light information, this intensity information, and you produce an image. So what happens when something is moving in the scene is that this causes some uh, blur, some uh, uh, artifact in the image. I'm sure every one of you had this experience of taking a picture, for example, at night of your kids or your pet actually moving around and this causing some, some blur, right? Um, so this is typically a situation where a prophecy event-based camera is not really having issue because we understand, we have actually capture motion. Our technology is, is understand dynamic information. So now when you combine this dynamic information with the static information of, of a regular RGB sensor, then you can correct this artifact. You can correct the motion blur and you can, you can improve image quality. So this actually turns, turns out to be a, a, of a great value for mobile OEM because um, one of the key actually uh, value proposition for for mobile OEM uh, is to improve image quality for in the phone, which has been one of the uh, probably main uh, uh, driving uh, um, features for for the past ten years in in the smartphone. Yeah, that, that this is great, and and again, just recapping what Luca mentioned, three key areas where. Um, uh, prophecies technology is making an impact, one being in the industrial environment. And, and he used a, a, a very good example talking about the boxes with the barcodes, the conveyor speeds, and the, dy the dynamics that go around or th that take place in that environment. And for all of us, that's impactful to us. And, and being able to be have uh, the ability to be more accurate and ship more boxes is something that the e-commerce companies need to to continue to to improve upon um and then automotive and it was perfect example last night i was actually driving glare low light conditions and someone was walking in an area where i i couldn't see very well so it was one of those scenarios where it's like gosh you know when when we have more advanced technology within the vehicles and and, and uh will they will help us all and so, so good point. And lastly, I think this is the one where our listeners really need to take um, uh, take a, a moment to truly understand uh, prophecies, technologies, brain chips, technology. This is where we want to go into mobile devices 
where we can enhance our everyday lives. And uh, imaging is one of the key aspects of that. So thank you, Luca, for, for bringing those up. Let's talk a little bit about um, some excitement at Prophecy. In August, you, you guys highlighted that, you know, the Prophecy Inventors community has over 5,000 members. Now, tell us your thoughts on the growth of this community and, and what makes it so unique. Yeah, so, so actually we launched our uh, MetaVision software two years ago. And uh, since then, we have been uh, seeing this uh, growing community of, of users of, uh, of our technology. And this is for us um, um, a key achievement. The reason being that um, uh, when we started eight years ago, we were uh, the first, the pioneers in, in this field, um, coming with this new sensing technology, with a new actually sensor modality, new type of data. Um, so with uh, actually the challenge of creating an ecosystem, because uh, in order to really fully uh, unlock the uh, the, the uh, adoption of the technology, you need to make sure that uh, uh, you create an ecosystem capable to uh, easily uh, uh, use the technology. So we invested over time more and more, and we keep actually investing more and more resources in developing uh, software tools, software assets, um, which are now part of our MetaVision software development kit, which we eventually released uh, uh, two years ago, and we keep actually growing with more and more algorithms. We, we have by now more than 100 algorithms of computer vision AI, machine learning models, uh, uh, label data set. Uh, we have also decided to, over time, to also create an open source architecture, uh, also to uh, give to especially people in academia a uh, um, way to contribute back to, uh, to, to, to this um, to the software infrastructure. And in addition, uh, also recently, we, we have actually also changed our business model to make, a, to make a, a MetaVision SDK available for free uh, for everyone to start using it. Uh, with this, I mean, fundamentally for, for the reason uh, I explained at the beginning is basically to enable as many people as possible uh, in the adoption of, the of a new technology that we believe is gonna change uh, radically many fields of application. Yeah, that's, that's fantastic. And, and we did the same thing with our, our meta TF environment. And, and last year, for example, we had over 4,000 new users of the technology in a very short amount of time. And we're seeing that continue to grow as, as we continue to evolve and move forward in, in 2022. This again is we're at the forefront. And, and one of the things I've said in the past is the tip of the iceberg, but but we are seeing the adoption um, and people accessing the technologies and accessing our environments to, to continue to move things forward. And so, so you brought up before you talked about, uh, you know, the history of prophecy, you brought up some of the key areas from a technology standpoint, but I'm just really curious of, of, of uh, being a man that's traveling, constantly traveling around and, and um, really driving the, 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 the forefront with the event-based vision systems. And uh, what's the most exciting application which is being developed or has been developed uh, by using your technology? Yeah, it's actually a very good question because uh, today um, we see clearly that there are uh, bottlenecks uh, in, in current vision system uh, caused by the current vision system in many AI-related applications. And, and we believe that the uh, the vision, uh, the, the biological vision system is so fundamentally um, efficient and fast that can uh, unlock many of this of this application. Now, if I need to choose one application that uh, actually the most uh, um, motivated uh, me in my journey with prophecy, I, I would probably uh, I would probably mention the first one that I mentioned at the beginning, which is the vision restoration of, of blind. This was, a, was at the very beginning, the reason we started. Uh, and although, although it may not have a, a, a strong business impact, uh, it has a huge, a very huge uh, impact for, for, for people. And, and this is something that we keep, uh, we keep developing with partners like Pixum Vision, Genside Biologics, uh, a different level from research to pre-development to product level. 
um, because, uh, because it's where we come from in the end. Uh, we come from uh, a, a technology that mimics the eye and that uh, naturally can serve uh, medical application for vision restoration. Yeah, that's fantastic. And one of the things that, that we've spent a lot of time on is at BrainChip is what we call beneficial AI. And so mm -hmm. I kind of knew that's where you were going to go with this, but but I I think it's phenomenal and visual restoration and what you guys are doing in that area. So it's exciting to see how this this will all play out as it continues to evolve. Um, that's for sure. So let's talk about brain chip and prophecy. And you know, I, I remember when when we had you here uh, in 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 Laguna Hills at our facility and. And we started to show you some of the demos that we were doing with some of your systems and, and the time frame it took us and, and the excitement on Christoph's face. Went, Whoa, this is great. Um, and we're building upon that and we're going to continue driving that forward, the, the closeness between the prophecy technology and what you guys have done and leveraging brain chips, you know, a neural network accelerator with the Kia, Akita, excuse me, and what we're doing. Um, so let's talk about that. Let's talk about how they complement and, and yeah. enhance the performance of your products. And uh, just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So I must say that we, we are very excited about this, uh, this collaboration with, uh, with the brain chip uh, because I would, uh, I mean, we are natural, natural partner. We, our technology are, are very uh, complementary. Uh, from the very beginning, when we started the prophecy with Christoph, we knew that, um, um, we were actually building uh, half a story, in fact, uh, because the retina, the retina per se is an extension of the brain yep. uh, that is doing uh, this fantastic job of pre-select, pre-processing information, only sending what is relevant for the decision. But then the brain uh, uh, is doing the rest, is, is, uh, is actually processing this event and then taking the decision. Uh, and today what we are doing at Prophecy is that... Um, uh, from the beginning, we have been uh, we have been interfacing our sensor with the conventional uh, compute platform based on conventional architecture that are today optimized for frame based uh, type of data, uh, and therefore uh, we faced uh, uh, we have been facing we're still facing uh, uh, some integration challenges uh, uh, that are sometimes uh, also uh, impacting to some extent the performance. Of, uh, of, uh, of the sensor itself, right? You need to make some trade-off. So now combining uh, our uh, human-inspired sensor with uh, uh, BrainChip human-inspired processing platform, which is actually by design, like our sensor um, conceived to actually process sparse and asynchronous and fast data that are naturally generated by our sensor, then, then uh, the half story we're missing from the beginning with Christoph is now complete. Now we can tell a full story to our customers. It is extremely powerful because all the uh, intrinsic benefit of this human inspired technology from the acquisition to the processing to the decision is now, is now possible. So now we can really show, um, we really push uh, the level of performance in terms of uh, speed, in terms of efficiency uh, to, uh, to levels that are uh, unprecedented in the industry. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. And this is this this is a, a really key point for, for all of our listeners. Um, technology continues to advance. Um, what Prophecy is doing and what BrainChip is doing, when you bring these two technologies together, that's really where uh, we're going to see some of the massive advantages moving forward. Uh, and and that's, that's what's exciting about this. So uh, for our listeners and, and those that are very active, stay tuned because uh, uh, there's a lot more to come uh, and, and over a period of time. But, but uh, you know, Luca, we end all of our podcasts talking about superheroes. And so I have to ask you, if you could be one superhero, who would it be and what would be your AI superpower? What would it be? That's an interesting question. Um, so probably... I would probably say flash because our technology is all around uh, motion and speed. We are able to reveal the invisible because we are faster than, than the others. And we can uh, even uh, bend time if we, if we want. And um, yeah, so probably this will be the, 
the superhero with uh, a new type of uh, uh, event-based superpower. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That You know, I was really curious uh, what you would choose and uh, just knowing you and so on. So Flash was good. Uh, thank you, Luca, for your insight and feedback today. It's truly appreciated. Uh, on behalf of the BrainChip team, uh, we want to thank all of our listeners, our investors, our analysts, employees, and everyone interested in learning more about AI and BrainChip. We truly appreciate all of your passion and support, and our podcast series will continue. So until our next podcast, we wish everyone to stay healthy, happy, and most importantly, stay out of trouble. Thanks for listening to the BrainChip podcast. Please remember to rate and review on your favorite podcast platform.